one person, boom, they give it to him. It, it's not fine. Are you telling me that I couldn't talk to people at Queen campaign? So not a single person, not a single person knows me. And not a single person knows what I'm going to do for the president if I'm elected. All the programs that I've lined up, not even a single one is good. I'm talking to myself. So nobody, even not a person, put it. So it means that. How about this man, Pa? <laughs> Did you know that the last election, everybody had good programs? I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be a member of the Council of State yeah. advising the president. What would he do for his people? <laughs> Fear delegate. What kind of promises do you Fear want to delegate. give them? That, okay, I'll, when the president asks for advice, I'll come and consult you <laughs> and gather your thoughts and go and give him. <laughs> really? Fear delegate. Well, that was one of the candidates in the Great contest Accra. in Greater Accra <laughs> to be elected into the Council of State. Eventually, Dr. Kote Jani. You can see that, yeah, he's powerful. He's on the front pages of the various newspapers, I'm telling you. Yeah, uh, let's start <laughs> off with the Daily Graphic newspaper. Uh, he's and on the front pages. Dr. Ah, Nico Tejani, Greater Accra. Front page. <laughs> Greater Accra <laughs> ref on the Council of State is on the front page of the... I love this man. Daily Graphic. Also on the we'll front page of the Daily him. Graphic uh, is uh, Tongo Rana uh, Kubilsong Na... Nalep Tang, uh, representing the Upper East Region. Also, Nano Uswa Chiang Brimpong, representing Ashanti. And Francis Albert Seth Nyonyo, representing the Volta Region. And the headline reads, Twist turns mark election to Council of State. Ken of Morocco arrives for visit, ruling on Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire boundary dis dispute in September. We've got to uh, wait uh, 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 I was going to say a while longer, but that's really long September before there's a ruling uh, on this. Uh, but 10 people from different backgrounds were elected at selected voting centers yesterday as regional representatives on the Council of State. In some of the regions, some of the candidates withdrew from the poll for personal reasons or stepped down to support other candidates. In the Greater Accra region, the chief executive officer of the ideal group of companies, the man who's making almost all the front pages of the paper today, Ni uh, Kote Jani, won the election. And it gives you uh, a breakdown of, of how events went across the country. Let's turn our attention to the back page of the Daily Graphic now. British government to provide some $18.5 million health facilities to selected hospitals. It comes with a picture of Mr. Alan John uh, and Mr. Boris Johnson, the UK Foreign Secretary, and Mr. John Benjamin, the British High Commissioner to Ghana. Uh, also in that photograph on the back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. So the British government has awarded an $18.5 million contracts for the supply of medical equipment and technical support to some Ghanaian health facilities. Under the contracts, uh, a British small and medium scale enterprise will provide the WA Hospital with 160 beds and the in Soko and Tepa Hospitals with 60 beds each under the first stage. The second stage involved the provision of 100 beds to the Medina Hospital, whilst the Konongo, Salaga, and Chifopraso Hospitals are to receive 60 beds each. And then under the third stage, Kumasi and Afari MOD hospitals would be provided with 250 and 500 beds, respectively. Wow, that's some good news coming in there. Uh, but you know there's no free lunch, right? So I'm sure we're paying back in some other way. There are more stories in the Daily Graphic newspaper that you can take a look at. So we deal with the Ghanaian Times. On the front page, our man is there. We'll go and speak to him, Dr. Kote Jani. Eight others elected to Council of State. King of Morocco arrives for a three-day visit. Clash between police students leaves 48 injured. But the main story... On the front page of the Ghanaian Times, the scare of terrorism, government vows to protect country. You have a, a picture there of an interaction ongoing uh, between the president and the French ambassador, Francois mm. Beaujolais. <laughs> also looking on the vice president, Dr. Baumia, and uh, the first lady, Rebecca Kufuado. Back pay, Chinese government support cotton industry, and trial on malaria vaccine proves successful. Good one there. So those are the stories summarily 
on the front and back page of the Guardian Times. I've got the Finder newspaper next. Front page of the Finder, $3.4 billion oil cash in six years. Only $262.57 million uh, accrue in heritage fund, but has the impact been felt by Ghanaians? Uh, but I guess for a lot of people, uh, we, we got to know how much had been accrued because uh, of the comments by Osafumafo that this, uh, the heritage fund was going to be used essentially uh, you know, to finance the cost of the free SHS. Uh, but now we know government has not decided government has not decided, not quite decided on uh, what they're going to use to fund this. Uh, and I listened to Newsnight on Joy FM yesterday, and this, you know, came out clearly. So we'll see how things unfold uh, today. Uh, major talking points. I'll be biased towards SME development. That's President Kofuada saying there. Two million Ghana cities rot, registrar interdicted, regional council of state members elected. Uh, okay, so Nana Somwa Mreku Nyampong III is representing the Eastern Region, and Nano Uso uh, Achiao has been elected to represent the Ashanti Region. But the story on page, uh, page two, uh, on some rots and somebody being interdicted, quite uh, interested in that. Where's the story on page two in the paper? And it says, uh, the Minister of Health has interdicted the Registrar of the Health Facilities and Regulatory Agency who has been indicted in an audit report for misappropriating about 2 million Ghana cities. The Registrar, Dr. Sylvia Ani, has been asked to step aside. A letter dated February 1, 2017, si signed by the Minister of Health, Kekwa Jiman Menu, said the directive takes immediate effect. The letter addressed to Dr. Ani stated that, quote, on the strength of the findings of the audit investigations into operations of the health facilities and regulatory agency, it has been decided that you step aside to pave way for further investigation to be conducted. You are therefore requested to take steps to hand over the affairs of the agency to the chief director of the ministry. This directive takes effect, uh, takes immediate effect uh, on quotes, and this was contained in the letter. There's a breakdown of how the monies were misappropriated in the Finder newspaper. Okay, that's it for the Finder this morning. There are more stories in the paper, though, Roland. You do the Daily Guide? So we do the Daily Guide. On the front page of the Daily Guide, we have Big Boys flawed in Council of State Elections. So far, so good, says Nana. Kofi Adams cars freed. Yeah. But we know that for Greater Accra, which eventually was won by Dr. Nico Tejani, uh, we had um, the NDC stalwarts in Octemens and redrawing. I believe the mm. last minute. Yeah, so that's why. All right, let's move on to the Daily Dispatch. The Daily Dispatch front page, Kweku back on missing state cars. Bahamas Ford car gift not missing. Uh, Francis Nyonya wins Volta region slots for Council of States. And you know that this patch yesterday started publishing list of uh, official vehicles and they are continuing. So it says list of official cars uh, in pages 8 and 9 in the paper. And they are just, you know, saying just uh, look at it again. If you're not sure the ownership of the vehicle that you're driving, you can uh, look at the cars the, the details of the cars that they provide in the Daily Dispatch newspaper. And if you find the type of car that you're driving and the number, the car number and the chassis number, then you know it's not yours. You take it back to the Flagstaff or something like that. <laughs> uh, details of that. Uh, but, you know, back page of the Daily Dispatch, that quick backup story says, just a brief uh, one, editor-in-chief of the New Crusading Guide newspaper, Kwekubak Jr. has dispelled claims that the Ford Explorer gifts given to President John Mahama by a Bokinabe contractor, Jibril Kanazue, is missing from the seat of governments. A deputy executive director of the National Service Scheme, Henry Nanabuachi, a.k.a. Nanabi, has claimed that his checks indicate that a total of 173 serviceable vehicles and 45 unserviceable vehicles are packed at a Flagstaff house, which is minus the controversial Ford Expedition car. But it looks like uh, Kweku Bako <laughs> is disputing that claim. Details on the back page of the Daily Dispatch newspaper, Roland. So we have on the front page of the Business and Financial Times, government engaging banks on cheap credits. That'll be interesting. 
And uh, the story is on page three. Uh, I don't usually read the stories, usually. But let me read this one. It says, government has begun informal talks with key financial institutions on how to reduce the cost of credit and make same available to the private sector to spare growth. Business Development Minister Mohammed uh, Ibrahim Awa has told the BNFT in an interview where, and um, hmm, let's see, uh, we have, it says the appetite of commercial banks for treasury bills reached a new height in 2016, as we're told, according to this report and also what has been uh, released by the Bank of Ghana over the period, uh, that they invested about 11.27 billion Ghana cities alone into highly perceived risk-free instruments. So they, they just didn't want to take that risk, so uh, Charlie. Mm. Even domestic credit, Charlie. Mm. Uh, Moody's banks face high asset risk despite solid capital buffers, stable funding, and an economic recovery pending. Boris Johnson hints at new trade deal. Boris Johnson, everybody thought he would be What's the leader. What's his interest in Ghana, really? Charlie. Yeah? Ghana is a, is a big trading partner with... Uh, they give us a lot of money, so we're always in there. Hmm. All right, uh, still ahead here on our show, we have a Relationship Friday conversation. We've got a big one on our plates this morning. Can marriage survive uh, with no children? Can you, be, can you say you're happily married without children? Uh, if you have an experience in this regard, we would love for you to share your experience with us when we settle down uh, a little after seven on that conversation. It will be an interesting one. We've got a, a, a very experienced doctor who's delivered so many babies, but he's also had to experience people uh, who, unfortunately, you know, he has to say, uh, I'm not sure that a baby can come. Uh, and he, you know, with all the experience that he had, he has, Mr. Uh, Dr. Kennedy Brighton will be here. Also, Amos Kevin Annan, a man uh, who's coached quite a lot of people, also has a lot of experience to share with us. So it's a mature conversation on the Relationship Friday here on the AM Show. Let's turn our attention. Let's do some online stories now. We start with myjoyonline.com. So entries for third BBC World News Komla Dumo Award open. Well, and we have to open the story and see if we qualify after the show. And then we'll enter, right? No, you don't sound interest, in, interested. Okay, you want the younger people to enter, I guess, to gain the experience. All right, let's move on. Uh, also, Ebola super spreaders caused most cases. And I think we reviewed this uh, when the BBC published it. Uh, moving on, Dufour Foundation launched to champion education, health, and economic development. Gempa in Tamil lectures grind to a halt over calls for election of deputy rector. So lectures at one, uh, one of Ghana's premier universities have come to a standstill as senior lecturers and staff leave their post to protest delays in the election of a deputy rector. We need democracy, uh, not only in the national sense, but in every aspect of our lives as Ghanaians. Yeah. Uh, King of Morocco in Ghana for bilateral talks. Parliament bribery, a black one threatens court action if not called to testify. We know that uh, he's, he's written, his lawyers have written uh, to the chair of this ad hoc committee, Mr. Joe Gatti, requesting uh, that he appears before it. You know, they had written to him before, except that when they made their shortlist and told us who was going to appear, his name was not captured. Uh, so essentially because his name was also mentioned by Mr. Jose Wusu, on Wednesday he's requested that the committee hears him out. We'll see what happens. But the committee is sitting today. This is the second sitting, the second public sitting today, Friday. All the cameras and all the microphones will be there in Parliament for this. Uh, and the sittings uh, are live. The citizens are live. The citizens are the citizens are live. We didn't expect. Well, we're calling for it. We didn't think it was going to be granted, but now it has. We'll see how this one goes. Satellite TV is full in Zimbabwe's cash shortage, according to their central bank. Uh, also, police released uh, seized Kofi Adams' vehicle. Say they are not state owned. So essentially, the the police say the CID uh, say that. Their, their, their job was to, to investigate the ownership of the five vehicles. 
uh, and after going through all the checks, all the necessary checks, the conclusion is that all the five vehicles duly belong to uh, the national organizer of the National Democratic Congress, Mr. Kofi Adams. Uh, but you know his lawyer, Samson Ladi Ayenini, uh, had written to uh, the Deputy General Secretary of the NPP who you know, allegedly accused Kofi Adams of stealing these vehicles. Mm. So I think they're they, they asking him to duly apologize. Uh, I think the last time I checked, which was yesterday in the evening, the apology had not come yet. We'll see if, you know, an apology comes today. Otherwise, more actions. I think somebody should be sued, you know. We talked about this here on the show. Because, you see, if you go... I, I think at, at some point in our democracy, we shouldn't be encouraged such impunity. Yeah. Because what's happened, one day if the NDC came, they will retaliate in some way, mm. or they would want to. Is that the best way we want to go at the end of this election period? And so we should be in a position where we want to live as people who are tolerant of each other. Yeah. Because uh, I don't know for how we can't even say that the election was not, or the electioneering, even before the election, was not mm. run cross enough. Yeah. It was full of insults and a lot of animosity between both sides of the political divide and even came the election and thereafter we have to experience all this yeah it's as if that it, it, it's, it's almost a, a tit-for-tat society yeah which should not be the case that if somebody true. owns a car and you don't have any evidence to prove that that car belongs to the state you don't go about seizing the cars if you have evidence you go through appropriate means and not those clandestine covert means to go and retrieve those vehicles. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. So if he says, for instance, that in the process of you know, them coming for the vehicles because they, they entered his home, if he says, for instance, that his uh, one million my, yeah. cash it, got missing in the process, who are you to argue that out with him? You know? Sure. Yeah, I'll take the money. You know? <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't it's true. Well, and we hope that this and this is shameful enough. This yes, it is, is. is this is not good. This is not good. It if is. you've got a you can't just Roland say that you suspect that the vehicle that I'm driving right now belongs to the state. So you come for and it. And the reason why we have to condemn this is that if after let's say have had haven't had a lot of experiences in uh sort of work we do or the kind of work we do, we decide to serve or go into public service. One day somebody comes and see you and says, Roland or Mamavi, yeah. the car you're having belongs to uh, government because you belong to a certain political party. It doesn't make sense yeah. at all. Even some of some of those individuals really are not, quote unquote, your normal political people you would. Yeah, understand. because Kofi Adams didn't even serve in the government. He was in the party. You know, so but if you, you can yeah. suspect someone, you know, but make sure you have the evidence. You don't for just all get into all the things homes. that are going on, one day you will definitely leave power, and is that the same way you want to be treated? Exactly. And I think that we need to do Good better. Good question, then. and I hope the politicians will reflect and, on this. And, and I think we need, we, we, know, we know all of them from both sides of the political divide. We see them all the time. So it's as if they are more like our friends in some way. And, and so when we see them doing this to each other, it, it begs the question as to really is that the way to go. Yeah. And that's not but the, the politician in, in another way is also trying to make us think in a, in a certain way. Should we also see everybody driving certain vehicles as government owned vehicles? Yeah, because you're, ac you're accusing yourselves. So you want me to, as, as a citizen, view you like that. When I see you sitting in any vehicle, I should be thinking, oh, I'm sure that's a government vehicle he's driving. Yeah. That's not the way to go. All right, sure, quickly, we've got to wrap up. So let's do City FM. Uh, uh, Nico Tejani, I guess he's the most popular uh, person Mother, the man, <laughs> Madam, the in man Ghana got today. Links, uh, he has media but friends. But he denies buying votes in Council he of has, State election. He has media friends. I think what was shocking in the Greater Accra uh, uh, elections yesterday was at the, at the venue, everything went on. You know, correct. Mostly. Nobody said anything. <laughs> then Only when after, the, <laughs> after the event, people started accusing that some people had paid money and all sorts of things. You uh, know, okay, uh, but three bastards for stealing glow backup uh, batteries at cell sites. Expand electoral college for council of state election. That's according to a defeated aspirant. Uh, just when there's a debate as to the <laughs> usefulness of the council of state, we don't need to expand. Somebody's it. asking for an expansion. We don't need to expand. Uh, it. Maybe if they had expanded, he would have gotten into it. List yeah. of regional council of state representatives also on the site. Uh, quickly before we rise, let's do BBC.
the Africa page of the BBC, Operation Fitz targets Angola VP. Uh, an Angolan Vice President Manuel Vicente or Vicent is accused of corruption by Portuguese state prosecutors. Uh, you can read about it. There are highlights of some stories here. Banks fixed prices for SA Rand. Banks are accused of rigging the price of South Africa's currency, the Rand, as far back as 2007. Uh, Zimbabwe targets satellite TV fees. Buhari, healthy and witty. Is he speaking now? Because we know, I think it's been three weeks already, but the vice president of Nigeria, uh, you know, President Buhari transferred power to him. So essentially, he's the president of, uh, president of Nigeria. It's not like there's a vacuum in terms of uh, power. Uh, but you should, you should not blame Nigerians for them. They've been there before because of President Yara Edouard. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, yeah. The man has been, hasn't been to Nigeria for three weeks now. He has not been been seen nor heard no he hasn't yeah. been to nigeria no he's not in nigeria yeah you know he went to the uk for some yeah. medical you know we're told blah, that he blah, called blah. one who donald trump or somebody yeah who he, did he, he call? spoke to some i think it was don was it donald trump some, or somebody. somebody like that yeah i remember and uh it was broadcast i think audio also yeah you know so i mean they've been there before but he, the man is 74 years, so when you elect a 74-year-old, sometimes you just have to be ready. Because your own father, who is a 74-year-old man, is not the, the man he used to be when he was 50. Mm. So sometimes you just have to put yourself in that position. But I, I think what they need as a country is transparency. You've got to come clean with the people and tell them what's happening. Otherwise, you leave people to speculate, and that's what is not healthy enough. We have to make way for sports right here on our show, but just before we go... Let's do our little money moments where uh, we're, we're doing our own susu on the show. And, and, you know, we want to encourage all of you to, you know, not spend all your lunch money. So 20 cities I budget every afternoon. But because of this, since the beginning of this year, I do half of my lunch. So my 10 cities goes into the box. I don't know where Roland gets his 10 cities from. Uh, but the whole idea is so we can save. <laughs> so we can save. So we can save. Uh, but as we always say, this should not be your main source of saving. It should not be. Just this is just, you know Mine is for holidays. In times in of December. Emergencies. All right. So Vim. stay with us. We've got sports coming up. With Benedict. <laughs>